welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So today's job is to service an unserviceable hydraulic cylinder. And what we're going to wind up doing is cutting the, the back end of it off and uh, then taking it all apart, repacking it, and then welding the end back on. Now this cylinder comes in from a customer of mine that's uh, actually a hydraulic shop. I'm doing all their machining. And um, this is one of those that their customer is desperately in need of. So we're gonna do what it takes to get this job done for them and get them back in business. Okay, so the first part we're gonna do on this job is we need to cut this end cap off, but I don't know how thick it is. That's where this comes in. This is an ultrasonic thickness gauge, and I use this for um, boiler testing, to test for thickness on boilers, but also for other things in the shop here. And we'll go ahead and calibrate it. And make sure I got my couplant a little bit there and touch it to the end cap. And 385, so we're about 3 eighths of an inch, 382, depends on where I wiggle it to, 377. So it's a 3 eighths inch cap. There should be a little step here that goes inside the tube just a little bit and then it's a chamfer that's welded. So I'm gonna shoot for cutting in probably a little less than the 3 8 and try to hit that and get that to pop off. But So one more thing on this cylinder before we throw it up in the lathe that's absolutely critical is the port for the line is on one side and the eye is on the other, so it's offset. Um, so we need to make sure this thing is timed right when put back together, so I'm gonna put some center punch marks on the cap and on the barrel. Just to give me an alignment when I put it back together. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a nice little skim cut just to clean up that weld so that it isn't so hard to, to um, start uh, using my uh, parting tool on. I'm running 500 RPM. So that's about the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I had that little knock in there, it was weird. And um, I took it out of the chuck, it's not there. So it must be in the cylinder because there's nothing that was hitting. I don't know, I've never had anything like that. So I'll just 
go ahead and put it back in and try it again. And there it is. That is so weird. So something internal of the cylinder is making that knock. I don't know how well you could hear that. I'll see if I can move the microphone in better, but we'll try that again. Sounds like there's something, this cylinder is just totally messed up. Maybe that piston's slapping inside of there. I, I don't know, it's weird, but I guess I'll slow it down some and, and we'll just do the work much slower so we don't do any damage to the bore. great but we'll just take it easy and see what happens and that really is weird I don't know what that could be but we know this cylinder's bad, so we've got to take it apart anyway. All right, so I got turned in a little bit. Now I'm going to take um, my uh, round button insert and just start cutting in and, and working it slowly just to see where we can, how far we can go. I don't know what the cylinder wall thickness is. I don't know what the bore is. There's no specs on this cylinder, so it will be a learning experience all around. So before anybody can ask, why don't you use your fancy ultrasound on that and see how thick that wall is? Well, it doesn't work the best on these round surfaces, um, but you know what? Let's give it a try. I'll have to clean the paint off in a spot to get good you know, penetration, you gotta, you can't have paint or anything to get a good reading on the wall. Um, but let's give it a shot. Okay, so I got my spot cleaned up here. Let me get the ultrasound up there so you can see it. There's my calibrated thickness off of the little test spot right down here. And I'll touch the probe. Oh, it's getting signal. 268 is the wall thickness. Well, that's cool. So this little symbol down here shows me the wall thickness. And as I move it around, it changes a little. But let's see if I can get anything down here. And no, its surface is too rough in here to get a reading. So, but. That's a good, good thickness. So we'll go, we know how to go far to go now, so let's get started. All right, so I'm just gonna start right here. Boy, that's obnoxious. And we're just gonna go in slowly and easily and just see what we can do. Because I don't wanna go too far and make a mess but I just want to separate that head. In fact, let me touch off on the barrel here. Zero my readout. And we're just gonna work it.
close. Let me just take a quick look and see what we got and where we're at. And double check that I didn't take off my punch marks. That would be bad. No, nope, they're still there. And it looks like I got a little ways to go yet. So I'm gonna switch over to a parting tool now because I have a decent groove for, for uh, filling with weld and then I'll just try to part it the rest of the way and hopefully we don't uh, screw up too bad. So I got my parting tool in there and I know, like I said, that head thickness is 3 eighths, so I'll just get close to the end, zero my indicator, well, my readout, of course I didn't hit the right one. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to start back here just to... So I'm not going in that full three-eighths of an inch. Now let's just see what happens. Sorry about that, the battery died on me. So I'm real close, I'm almost to my depth. But I don't want to go too far and run the risk of not being able to get this back on well. I think we're there. There it is. Just like that. And I shouldn't have too much problem welding that back on. I see they just butted it up to the end of the tube. They didn't even put a step in it. So let's go ahead and get this thing out of here and, and get that get that piston out of there. Let's see if we can figure out what was knocking in there. That was said just just weird. All right, so I got it over here in the vise. Let's see if we can pop this thing out of here. And there it goes. There ain't even a seal on there. So that was the piston hammering in there. Boy, this thing's weird. Okay, to say the least that I'm confused as to what's going on here with this thing is just beyond me. Um, there's no piston cup. There's no seal there. It's just a, a loose fitting plate. And there's our end cap. Um, but we do know those seals are bad, but it's just odd, there should be seals here or something. I've never seen anything like this, but that's okay. Well, I'll talk to the customer that's rebuilding it for me. I'm just doing the machine work and we'll get the seals and everything kind of figured out and then we'll put it back together. So here obviously is a failed seal and that one will come out nice and easy, but that thing is just trash. And then we've got the seal down inside there, this one. And see which one of my picks will work to get that out of there. A stubborn one. <clears throat> I 
Well, I'm gonna keep working on this off camera just so I don't bore you guys with struggles to get this out or maybe I'll do a high speed. Um, Ah, got it. That little sucker did not want to come out. But there are part numbers there, so we should be able to get seals. Perfect. So here are our new seals. And uh, so I'll go ahead and I'll get these popped in and then we'll finish assembling the cylinder. Alright, I'm just going to put a little grease on the rod here just to help it slip by on the seal. I'll just give this thing a shove and it might go right in. There it goes. Just like that. So we're back here in the weld shop. I got it set up on my roller positioners. There are punch marks there and there they are there. And since this thing obviously wasn't uh, super precision, we're just gonna butt it up there and I'm gonna tack it. one more spot so when I built my powered roller stands a while back um, and did the video of it they worked great absolutely love it um, except for on the lighter stuff when you get lighter things you want run into problems I would have to get this ground to stay right here uh, well see it won't stay ver horizontal out but it doesn't have enough traction to pull it around so we'll just weld these up on the bench and uh, go from there. So since I had to do this in a few passes, um, I'll hit it with the flap wheel, clean it up, make it look nice, double check everything, and then we'll go ahead and um, you know get it ready and get it back to the customer. They can pressure test it, and then it'll be on to their customer to go back into service. Well, there it is, all serviced, ready to go. Just because they say it's unserviceable doesn't mean that it really is. You just gotta get creative sometimes. This will go back to my customer, they'll pressure check it, make sure it's all good and functioning, and then it'll go back to their customer and go back into service. So 
like I said, you just got to get creative. And uh, also, guys, please check out my Store Frontier account. It's the link is in the description below. There's shirts and, and uh, a can koozie and some, some things like that that I've designed up for you. Um, I hope you enjoy it and, and uh, wear it with pride. And uh, until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time. <laughs>